So, then uh, I will welcome you to our uh, ERCI webinar uh, on using data for improving safety in rail. My name is Rico Siegmund. I'm from the uh, Saxony um, railway cluster uh, and uh, I will guide you today uh, through our webinar. Uh, at first, uh, I will give you uh, yeah, a short information on who is ERCI and uh, what about uh, uh, the name STARS. And uh, so, um, ERCI, it's the European Railway Cluster Initiative and it's uh, a summary of uh, of uh, 16 uh, railway clusters covering uh, 16 European countries. And uh, all together, we are, um, yeah, uh, have the contact to over few, uh, 2,000 companies all, all around, all across Europe. And uh, what is our, our aim? Um, our aim is uh, to bring customers, suppliers, and uh, yeah, supply chain opportunities together. And for this, we using uh, yeah webinars like today, also uh, partner matchmaking for R and D projects on European level, and uh, yeah, various other activities. What is stars? STARS stands for our uh, for one of our European projects uh, named Strategic Alliances Boosts, Boosting Railway SMEs. And uh, it's to support uh, European SMEs um, to adopt advanced technology technologies to boost their pr uh, products, services, manufacturing processes and uh, their own organization. If you want more information about uh, the STARS project, uh, you can visit our website and also you can ask uh, your regional um, railway clusters. They will also give you uh, more, uh, more, information, more information about this project and uh, how you can use it. So, uh, next big event from uh, the STARS project is uh, our third hack and match event, uh, which takes place from uh, the 12th uh, to the 14th of April. It's completely online and it's uh, about the topic uh, blockchain for railway processes, products and services. And on this event, uh, we bring together uh, companies which are looking for new technologies and uh, companies which are provide these new technologies to solve, uh, yeah, uh, own problems. But this is enough uh, to ERCI and STARS. Um, I would like to hand over to our first speaker of today, uh, to uh, Wolfgang Dohmann. Mr. Wolfgang Domen, he's managing director uh, of ICE uh, GmbH, a company from um, from Saxony, from uh, our cluster Rail S, and uh, he will uh, tell you about uh, the use of uh, artificial intelligence uh, in rail transportation. So, uh, Mr. Domen, the... good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. The floor is yours. Please, floor share your is Please show your presentation. Yes, I will do so. So hopefully you can see the presentation now. Yes, we can see it. Perfect. So the topic of today, a very warm welcome from my side as well, uh, is using data for improving safety in rail and how we are doing this in ICE uh, as part of this uh, ERCI initiative. So we are dealing with artificial intelligence and we are dealing with mobility, of course. Uh, these are the focus topics. And we in ICE have a very 
clear statement done to improve the safety in traffic, especially for light railway vehicles. Uh, we tried to find some data regarding uh, accidents uh, with uh, railway vehicles. And what we found is a detailed analysis of, uh, you can see this on the right side of 8,800 uh, accidents where uh, pedestrians have been injured in a period uh, from 2000 to 2021. And the study has been made for accidents in Austria, Germany, Sweden, and Switzerland. And what you can see, or what the results are in the graphics you see with which uh, participants, so to say, the accident happened. And the summary is that uh, pedestrians are, of course, the most vulnerable tram collision partners, uh, especially for uh, severe and fatal accidents. Uh, so the risk uh, is much higher than uh, driving in the car, of course, when you have a collision with the tram. And it can be said that uh, the most uh, frequent accident location is the tram stop, or it happens, uh, as we have from data in Vienna, in, in front of the tram stop or after the tram stop. So everything around the stops is, so to say, the most frequent uh, accident area for the vulnerable road users, so to say. And uh, a detailed figure about Germany, about the total uh, accidents which happened there, you can see that uh, in Corona times, there was a short reduction of total accidents, but the fatal was seriously injured accidents uh, did not uh, decrease. So a fatal injury is uh, where the person did not survive the accident. So unfortunately, uh, this figure is still too high and every accident of this is one accident too much. And that's why we in ICE are, have the vision to protect tomorrow's world with the eye. So our motto is we make every kind of machine see and our products and solutions are mainly dealing with the focus of safety and more security for the operators using the trams. And therefore, we have experts in artificial intelligence, uh, especially in deep learning and machine learning, in camera sensor technology, and in the integration of the software and the hardware in such kind of uh, machines. We are 30 plus experts, as uh, Rico stated, in Germany and Austria. And uh, we founded the company in 2013. And the technology which we use, uh, you can see here, is in divided in three layers. It's first about the neural networks, so to say the artificial learning networks themselves. It's about a lot of software for doing then the calculation, the image processing, the 2D, 3D estimation, where are the objects and uh, recognizing them fully. And at the end, the integration in the hardware, of course. And in these three layers, all of the functions uh, can be seen what related to the outcome of our solutions. And what we are doing are an object recognition and also all of kind of driving assistance solutions. And we have our own solution stack for that. And we will come later to this. And customers on our side are as well on automotive side. So for utility vehicles, for trucks and buses, uh, and on the railway side, uh, especially the light railway vehicles, uh, the OEMs or the tier ones in both areas. So which kind of systems can now help with AI, what uh, can be offered at the moment? And when you see here the railway vehicle, so we can starting in the, in the front. In the front, the first system which can be offered is a front collision warning system, uh, which is uh, showing in a little bit far distance, so to say. Uh, the second system is a moving off assistant 
who is looking, so to say, to the close area in front of the vehicle. Then we offer already for many years uh, an exterior mirror, who gives much more field of view, looking, so to say, along uh, the drum than a classical mirror, which is mounted mechanically on the vehicle. And now upcoming is, so to say, the blind spot assistant, the turn assistant on the right side. This is something which is already mandatory uh, for all new trucks and buses, uh, which will be sold uh, next year. And in trams, so to say, it's still, uh, so to say, not necessary to have it, but uh, for operators, a very useful add-on to have also a blind spot assistant uh, to avoid uh, accidents with bikes and other, so to say, fast upcoming vehicles in the blind spot on the right side. Then we have a quite new thing uh, where we can use the same technology. This is the intelligent platform monitoring. What can we do here? So we can have a look at the doors and when uh, the driver wants to start again with the vehicle, we can optimize uh, the self-handling so we can tell him proactively if somebody is somebody standing still close uh, to the door. And uh, this is also a very useful utility that the operation can work more seamlessly. And last but not least, when we have used the AI for all of the outside cameras, you can also use it for the inside cameras. So you use the, you take the video streams of the existing CCTV cameras and we make then the inside view intelligent. So here we have also some use cases already executed, which will be delivered this year, like empty train detection uh, when the train goes out of operation, that uh, it will be controlled, that nobody is, so to say, uh, sitting in the train when it goes out of operation. So what we can offer here is a complete flexible AI architecture where you put uh, one intelligence box, so to say, into uh, the vehicle. And depending on which video streams you provide to this box and the logic for the use case, which is necessary, you get a certain application uh, which can help in various situations to improve uh, the operation of the vehicle and to make it more safe. Coming from the overview now to the technology, how is this working and what is necessary to deal with these topics? So what you need to have is to start with these topics, you need a good camera or how, which cameras to use, which field of views to have, that you have, so to say, the right pictures for the solution you want to provide. Then you need uh, pre-trained neural networks. So the deep learning nets, which are detecting the object and the people have to be trained based on video material, which has been collected. We did this with our neural nets over the last five years. We collected petabytes of data, which we train into these neural nets that they can uh, detect all of the objects which we need to provide our use cases. The third thing is then uh, you need all of the software in an embedded device. So the CI box in the train, which is doing the image processing and which is doing also the AI processing with an AI accelerator and doing then all of the calculation of the 2D, 3D estimation and the complete perception. And I will come to this, what this means uh, in terms of outcome and result, what is provided. And last but not least, you need also the regulation know-how about what is expected from the official regulation for which kind of driving assistance function or for the ICCTV functions, what do the operators expect to make the useful uh, use case out of it? And the last thing is 
the respective hardware that it's allowed to be run uh, in the vehicle and that it can be implemented and calculate all of the uh, necessities for the use cases you want to realize. And having these ingredients, so to say, uh, packed together, then you come to a successful uh, AI solution which can really work in the vehicle. And we come to the first and most important step because what is the AI doing? And we call this uh, perception. And the perception is first that you, of course, detect in the camera picture that you have here objects. This is the first step. The second step is classifying the objects. So which object is it? Is it a car? Is it a bike? Uh, is it here like a light or is it some, something else? The third step is tracking of the object. So you see here this line, and this means that we follow on the objects where they are coming from and where they are going to. Uh, this is important uh, to know where the objects are moving. And the fourth step is the segmentation. So you need to know which kind of objects are relevant for you because a car on the other side of the road will not be relevant for me for a possible collision. So the segmentation helps then to filter out the relevant objects. And the total sum of this, so to see the detection, the classification, the tracking and the segmentation gives the picture for the machine. Uh, which object is it? Where is it coming from? Where is it going to? And we have now a practical look into a camera view, uh, what this means. So what you can see here is exactly the outcome of all of what I told before. In the middle first, we have the detection of our track. This is more or less the segmentation about the relevant information. Then you see the objects which de we detect and the class. So the green class are the people, the yellow class are the cars. And then we are calculating, uh, so to say, you see here these lines. These are the, the tracking uh, vectors of the objects. And we are calculating now where the objects are coming from. And if these objects are, so to say, dangerous for our active way and track. And based on all of this information, then we have as a result, we call it the calculation of total time to collision. And with this total time to collision, we have already seen there is coming information and warning. Information is when something is, so to say, people aside the track and could be relevant in if they move in our direction. And the real warning is uh, when this object is also having a risk going into a collision with us. So, and this is permanently streamed out of the CI box and then be used for the tram driver uh, to give out the respective warnings. Coming to the use cases, uh, just described a little bit more in detail. What you have seen in this video is this front collision warning part. So there is a regulation with requirements called VDV191. And our system is at the moment, I believe the only one which is achieving this regulation with the camera only system. So we need no second sensor to achieve the regulation. And the system is informing and warning the driver in these critical situations. So the driver sees only this information and warning signals, what you have seen in the video before. Of course, he sees no video because he's sitting in front of the drum and has the same view. There is no uh, monitor necessary to show him any kind of additional video. And we detect persons and 
the cars up to a range a minimum 50 meter, 30 meter are required. And in good weather condition, it is working up to 80 meters, as you can see here in this graphic. And uh, the advantage of such AI system is that you can improve them constantly. So there's always possible uh, to deploy software updates on such a, such a system to improve the quality and the functions. If you put the second camera in front of it, you have the option for a moving off assistant. So it's similar to the front collision, but only for the near field in front when the tram driver is starting. What is the difference? The difference is that the field of view, so to say the angle of the camera is much wider uh, and goes as in a NAR field warning, uh, similar also to uh, the blind spot on the right side of the vehicle. And in fact, that this is uh, normally also a very critical area in terms of uh, the accident statistics you have seen in front. This could be a useful uh, add-on to the front collision, having both a near field and a far field camera to give a warning in both areas. The third thing is which is coming up now in uh, a lot of tenders is that drums should have also a blind spot warning on the right side. As I told, it's already mandatory for truck and buses that, uh, so to say, people and uh, bicycle drivers in uh, a field of six to 10 meters aside the vehicle are detected and can provide a warning if they are moving or crossing uh, the line of the vehicle. So this system can also detect uh, bicycle drivers and uh, pedestrians in the second row behind parked cars. So this is a very useful add-on in front of the tram as well. What is the system overview of such a system? So you can see here that uh, we have now put the two front collision cameras, the near field and the far field camera and the blind spot cam uh, so to say connected via Ethernet to this rail interface or this rail controller uh, who is doing the AI calculation. And we can connect both sides of the vehicle to this AI box and the results can be provided to the central computing unit of the vehicle and it can be fully integrated in the vehicle uh, to show the respective warnings to the driver. Which components do we use at the moment? So at the moment we use such a central uh, rail certified uh, GPU based uh, computing box where you can connect uh, the cameras and we use cameras, IP cameras, which have a special housing or funnel for the mounting position on the windshield that there is no blinding of uh, the cameras from the light or from the windscreen or the windshield. So this has to be adapted somehow to the individual vehicle, but normally it's working quite okay. Then if we are already outside of the vehicle and we have an AI box, I told that we can do this uh, platform monitoring as well. So we have now the first request and delivery also for this outside platform monitoring where the requirements are two. So the first requirement is, is there a platform or no platform? So when the train arrives that you know if you can open the door or not. Uh, the second requirement is which people are so to say close uh, to the train, as you can see here on the right side, uh, is it able to, for me as a driver, to close the doors and uh, to start to the next stop and to have here a self-handling operation that nobody has to have a detailed look outside the train. So also a very useful uh, add-on uh, outside the vehicle. And last but not least, as I mentioned, inside the vehicle, 
we have already to deliver uh, the first system where we take the CCTV cameras inside of the vehicle and we detect in these video streams if uh, people are still uh, sitting in the vehicle. So when the train is going out of operation, we clearly know uh, if somebody is still in the vehicle or not. And additional use cases can be passenger load factor for some parts of the vehicle. And also uh, if reserved special seats are free or not. So the, the operators are the ones who have to give us, so to say, the input for new ideas regarding ICCTV use cases. And last but not least, we have still uh, the replacement of the mirrors, which give already uh, a better field of view uh, on the right side, on the blind spot side, and which give also uh, new field of views uh, in different situations where the vehicle is starting or stopping. So not only the, the picture of the mechanical outside mirror, and this system is also SIL-1 certified, uh, which makes sure that the picture which is in the camera is also seen on the screen. And here just some examples of the SIL certified picture compositions uh, according to the cameras of the front cameras and the rear side cameras, which can be shown uh, to the driver in uh, different situations. This is still of course, uh, a camera monitor system, but added such an electronic mirror system with uh, the AFI functions shown before gives, so to say, a real safe support for the driver and for the operator to have a safe operation of the vehicle. So this was my short introduction to how AI could be used. Uh, thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Doman, for uh, this presentation. Uh, in the chat, there are uh, a few uh, questions. Uh, so I would like to share my screen with these questions. Sure. Just give me a moment. So, so therefore I will start with, uh, yeah, the first question. Uh, is it possible to retrofit uh, systems into existing railways? Yes, this is possible. We exactly developed it. Therefore, uh, we have started with OEMs to implement it in new vehicles, of course, but it can be also retrofitted in existing vehicles. Okay, then up to the next question. Um, have the systems been deployed anywhere in revenue services? Uh, what is meant by revenue services? Um, okay, therefore I uh, had to ask this person who, uh, uh, which asked this question. Uh, yes. Hello. Yeah. Uh, can, I, can I just clarify? Yes, uh, my name is Ivan Grigorchenkov. I work for SNC Level in Atkins. Just uh, uh, the question was about revenue service. Uh, have, have your system been deployed anywhere in the actual service uh, or, or whether they've been just trialed or What's the current uh, state? So the current status is that it it's running. So it, it is uh, deployed in two projects, one in Switzerland and one in Germany. Uh, these vehicles will be delivered or starting to be delivered uh, by mid of this year. Uh, the, so the, the test of the vehicles has been already completed. I think is then that the handover procedure from the OEM to the client is uh, is still open. Uh, so this is valid for the perception part in the front collision, of course. Uh, 
what we did not deliver is, so to say, a retrofit client for the front collision warning system. Here we are looking for uh, so the first uh, friendly customers who want uh, to try this. And for the ICC TV solutions, uh, this uh, empty train operation has to be delivered for the first fleet of vehicles uh, by June of this year. So we delivered already to the OEM and uh, will be implemented in the next weeks and months. So all of the services I've shown to you in the stated are already uh, so, so in some projects integrated. So this is nothing which is uh, just paperwork, so to say. Thank you. Okay, then up to the next question. Um, do you consider the robustness of the perception output with respect to weather conditions, lightning and so on, and also the uncertainty uh, of the perception outputs? Yeah, this is a very good question. So the, the status at the moment is regarding sensors, that the camera is regarding intelligence, uh, the most robust and also cheapest sensor which you can use. Uh, the lighting conditions in the tram area are always mainly inner city conditions. So for the collision situations, there is always enough light that the detection can be used. And as you have seen, even if in not every picture, every object is detected from the neural network, in fact, that we did, we use 15 frames per second so to a very high uh, picture rate for the detection, uh, there is almost no object which is not detected in any kind of picture so that the system knows at the end. Uh, and this is very reliable that you really detect so to say, the objects at the end. Uh, weather is only a topic. Uh, yes, if the camera does not see anything, it can also not detect anything. This is similar to people. If you don't see with your eyes, you also uh, cannot recognize what it is. Uh, in fact, that way I behind the windshield, uh, this is working quite good. Uh, only in rain situation, you have to be sure uh, that, so to say, the camera is also uh, frequently uh, cleaned. Uh, this has to, to work as well. Uh, and when the camera sees enough, then it's really reliable. Okay, and I think one last question and the other questions uh, for this, uh, we will produce an Q&A slide. I can, I can answer the last one immediately. It's okay, working then. up to 80 kilometers per hour at the moment. For higher speeds, you have to have a camera which is looking in a far, far distance. Now, this is possible, but you need a different sensor setup. The system is considered to be as a standalone on vehicle. No, there is no data communication in any control center. It's an embedded system, which is fully working uh, standalone in the vehicle. Okay, then uh, also the last question, uh, which is shown here, um, are there uh, any technical char uh, characteristics of the systems that would be useful to standardize? Uh, I think the uh, the, there is no standard at the moment. This VDV191 is a recommendation, uh, but the clear uh, standard regarding the robustness of the detection in uh, weather conditions, in daylight conditions, uh, what should be achieved uh, would help, of course, uh, in terms of quality, how the systems should work. Uh, there, there is no big, uh, deep description of the quality of service at the moment. Uh, so this, this this allows, so to say, also different kind of systems to be applicable uh, to achieve this. So the, the when, then I would standardize uh, the quality of detection of the different sensor systems. Okay. Uh... Lutz, uh, you um, raised uh, your hand. There are, there are two more questions in the chat. Uh, the first one is how are you de dealing with privacy aspects, faces of persons, car plates? Is there a registration of the data collected? 
Yeah, the node data are collected, no data are stored. This is a real time streaming video where just the objects and object lists are calculated into these moving vectors to give out a warning for the driver. So there is nothing which is stored uh, from any picture regarding the picture content itself. Yeah, second question is we here in the industry are concerned about uh, accuracy and false positives. What is your accuracy and false positive rate? Yeah, the false positive rate is is always depending on the situation and on the uh, quality, as we discussed before, daylight uh, when the weather conditions. Uh, we have already received for our deep learning algorithms, uh, the blind spot algorithms from the ADAC, from the German Automotive Association for our blind spot detection system uh, on the truck, uh, a very positive test result. We won as the best blind spot system, the competition against eight other systems uh, with uh, the input of the testers that our system had the minimum false positive rate in the information for the driver. So the most important thing is, as I stated before, the quality of service of the detection. When you don't detect objects, you also cannot warn. And if you detect wrong objects, you also give, uh, so to say, false warnings. So our false positive rate is very, very uh, low. So the drivers do really only get warnings when it's a real warning. Okay, thank you. Uh, any uh, additional questions from uh, the part uh, participants? If not, then uh, I would like to go on. Uh, if you have a question afterward, uh, you can uh, provide these questions directly to uh, Mr. Doman. Uh, your, uh, his contact data you will find uh, in the presentation. And uh, all presentation uh, we are show today, uh, you will, uh, yeah, we will provide them uh, after the webinar. Thank you very much. So then uh, to our second speaker. Uh, for this, uh, I will hand over to my uh, yeah, colleague from uh, from France, to Amelie from the uh, cluster eTrans, and uh, she will uh, yeah give you some information to our next speaker. Thank you, Rico. Hello, everybody. I'm Amelie from the eTrans cluster, and eTrans is a member of the ERCI network presented by Rico at the beginning. And uh, we work very closely with uh, Ralenium. Ralenium is the French Technological Research Institute for the railway sector. It implements innovation projects by creating partnerships between industry and academia in line with uh, the needs of the railway sector. So one of the challenges of Ralenium is to reduce the maintenance costs and to increase the network availability. Within the Into Track 3 project, which is a project part of the Shift to Rail program, Ralenium has developed a new contactless ultrasonic method to detect rail defects. Uh, this new technology would allow to improve the quality of the measurement at a lower cost. And uh, after completion of the proof of concept in test lab, a full scale demonstrator trolley has been developed, allowing dynamic track monitoring at low speed. Uh, Valentin Vlig, who is mechanical engineer at Ralenium, is going to, to present this new technology. So enjoy uh, the presentation. And uh, as before, if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat and we will answer to to your questions at the end. So thank you for your attention and Valentin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Amidi. So I will stop sharing my screen. Okay, can you see the screen correctly? 
Yes, we see it cor uh, correctly. Okay, perfect. So, um, as Emily introduced, uh, I am Valentin Vliegen, I'm a mechanical engineer for Radium, and today I'm going to talk about uh, an innovative technology um, for uh, rail inspection. So concerning the advanced uh, technologies involved uh, in this uh, presentation, uh, there are artificial intelligence at, at a small scale, and there is also connectivity, internet of things, and finally mobility. Uh, I thought I had to present briefly Radium, but Amelie did, so I would just jump this part and uh, will directly contextualize the study. Uh, explain how we set up the technology, show it the demonstrator truly. Oops, so I can jump this. So let's jump in the subject with the context of the study. Uh, I maybe said a few words about it, so that would be a bit of a repetition, but in the context of railway network operation, uh, performance, performance and uh, maintenance are required, and performance with availability, reliability and security of the network, but also maintenance to keep uh, the performance at a good level. Uh, this means operations and services, logistics and costs. As many Radium projects, uh, the technology has been developed to analyze the rail infrastructure and um, especially the rail. Uh, with the trains running on the track, there will be wear and the rolling contact fatigue at the interaction between the train wheels and the rail will create cracks and defects. Uh, so the study is part of a predictive maintenance context. Uh, from the observation uh, of, of the defect, following its evolution in time and optimizing the ray maintenance and especially ray grinding. Uh, as uh, as just told you, the study concerned uh, predictive maintenance. Uh, the defects uh, we study are surface defects, such as squats, cracks, but especially head checks. Uh, I will explain later why we focus on these defects. So it checks or cracks that appear with a high density um, between the running surface of the rail and the beginning of the gauche corner. So the um, head checks are often located on the outer rail of curves and their apparition is facilitated by heavy train traffic such as freight train. And last information concerning the checking is that the angle of the cracks is around 25 degrees. Uh, it's useful for the algorithm to detect the cracks, actually. Uh, the main objectives are, of the study are, are to develop a reliable non-contact rail inspection technology and to get a contactless uh, system allowing continuous detection of rail cracks at low speed, uh, reaching up to 30 kilometers per hour. And uh, Radenium started this project at the first levels of the tier one scale and uh, until reaching about tier one six seven uh, today. So the very first project we made concerning this subject concerned the effectiveness and improvement of conditional maintenance. Uh, to anticipate ray failure, as explained. In this project, we started to study the possibility to detect defects in railway structures by ultrasonic methods. We quickly decided to use the EMAT sensors and start with the study on the feasibility. We focused on defects located in the ray head, especially the five first millimeters, and with the contactless method. The, this has been chosen because of the lack of information concerning what's happening in the very first millimeters uh, of the wayhead with uh, other um, ultrasonic methods. So we started to make a, a benchmark of the existing non-destructive technologies for the ray inspection. We compared the physical method, the type of defect that can be detected, the maturity of the tech, um, and the information on the speed which by the tech, pros and cons, etc. And we decided, uh, as just told you, to uh, focus on the EMAT method that I'm going to show you next. 
So uh, the EMAT are sensors that are used in other fields than the railway industry, uh, such as pipelines inspections. The challenge related to this method is that it is mainly used for static inspection, and we want to do some continuous inspection along the way. The advantages of the EMAT are that it's a contactless technology. We can control the generated type of waves, and there are good repeatability on the measurements in comparison with some other ultrasonic methods. And the sensors are insensitive to the surface state of the rail, such as rust. But uh, with, with advantages also come new drawbacks. So for instance, the method is very sensitive to the liftoff. So the liftoff is the, the space between the sensors and the rail. Uh, it is really sensitive to it as it decreases expon exponentially the amplitude of the magnetic field. And the magnetic field is actually measured by the sensor. Uh, so another drawback is that uh, EMET tends to have big probes. But I, I think that the benchmark has been made several years ago. And so today, the EMET sensors have well evolved. And we can find some smaller ones. Um, the EMAT are made of a permanent magnet and a conductive coil. We can have control on generated wave controlling the electrical signal sent into the coil. The inspection method consists in using at least two sensors, one uh, as an emitter and the other as a, the receiver. The deformations uh, generated by the propagation of ultrasonic waves creates a dynamic magnetic field around the surface of the wave, and this field is then detected by the receiver emat. And then it is transformed into an electrical signal, which is proportional to the speed of the wave. Um, in our case, we generate Rayleigh waves with the emat that uh, uh, run at the surface of the wave. So we started studying the feasibility of the method by using EMAT sensors to detect manufactured defect on a rail sample. Um, this analysis were static analysis and showed good results to detect artificial defects. We made an experimental setup with one and two receivers as it duplicates the received data. And as the results were convincing, we then try to analyze the way continuously with the relative movement um, uh, between the, the, the sensors and the ray. So to do so, we made a dynamic test bench. It allows us to perform continuous testing on the ray samples. And on this bench, we can reach a speed of nine meters per second, so which is approximately 30 kilometers an hour. And the batch is also almost five meters long, so we can reach the maximum speed in the middle of the bench for a length of one meter to analyze the rise at a constant speed and then stop the guiding carriage. Um, concerning the objectives with the operating test bench, uh, after the validation of the technology, it was to improve the measurement system. So we use statistical signal processing algorithm. It should be used to improve the reliability of the method before running some real environment test. The statistical signal processing is made of signal analysis and signal characterization in order to reduce the noise of the signal generated by the movement of the sensor in order to automatically detect the defects. So some laboratory measurements were required to get some data and define the parameters to analyze in the algorithm. Uh, here you can see the test bench running with the ray in the middle of the bench bands, uh, and the data are then analyzed. Uh, here is an example of the results we can get from uh, the manufactured defects right in the very first time. 
So this image shows you a signal that is received by the sensors. The signal change as the sensor move along the way. And the emitted pulse are attenuated with defects. Uh, on this picture, on the right of the screen, we can understand the defect detection with the sensors. Um, so we just remove the electrical part of the signal, which is uh, at the beginning uh, on the A scan. And the B scan is on the right is just a succession of A scan. And then we can uh, detect the defects and try to characterize uh, the cracks. So after running laboratory measurements, uh, the next step was to make some real environment tests to prove the feasibility and to adapt our current system. So in the first time, we used an available trolley coming from uh, another project and partially part of Radium. Uh, we used this trolley to prove the feasibility in real environment. So the measuring set from the bench has to be set up on the trolley and from our feedback from the test on the, on the bench, we try to enhance the system. Uh, we wanted to improve the position of the sensors, not only on the running surface, but also on the gauche corner of the rail because of the position of the, of the defects. Um, the plate on the bench was bending with, uh, because of the strong magnetic field of, of the EMAT sensors. So we wanted to avoid this bending uh, in a real environment. Once the adaptations may, made, we carried out some tests at Hirotuna facilities. Uh, on the screen, you can see the rack electronic assembly, which allows us to get the data from the EMAT that are mounted on uh, linear actuators. Uh, the measurement campaign took place on the tunnel, um, on a track portion with a check defects area. Uh, so then we can uh, compare our results to other technologies. So after the first measurement campaign, we enhanced the measuring set with the feedbacks from the previous test. We prototype sensors positioning parts to better position the sensors on the way. Uh, we also control the sensor's position with the linear actuators with a continuous lift of control. We made the acquisition of the ray profiles so we can have a look even after the, the test. Um, so we can get the relation between the amplitude of the signal and the ray profile. And finally, we also improved some communication protocols. Um, Okay, here is an example of signals processing. So the signal processing first consists in signal denoising. Uh, the signals are cleaned up and analyzed in real time. What we see on the left is the time frequency representation of noisy signal. Uh, at the bottom left, you have an illustration of the denoising process. Um, in this process, we isolate compact components uh, in the time frequency domain and we uh, rebuild, we reconstruct the signal to obtain a, a noise free signal. And then on the right part of the screen, you, we just show how the analysis proceeds. So it is a sequential analysis from noisy signals and this sequential analysis is performed by simple artificial, artificial intelligence tools uh, with mat matching learning, but a uh, quite robust one. So I, I showed you results from the real environment test. It has proven the feasibility of the method to, to detect real surface defects on the ray head. And then in the Intertract 3 project, Radium was in charge of the design of a, a demonstrator trolley for the EMAT method. Um, this trolley should also allow Radium to carry out um, more tests in multiple facilities to get uh, in-field data. So the, just a bit of context for the Intertraxi project. Uh, it is a European project part of the shift to program. The project has been created in a context of increasing 
the network capacity while using aging infrastructure. And at the scale of the whole project, the main objective is to improve the European railway infrastructure. Uh, in this project, sometimes uh, some types of development are done as demonstrators, uh, which end up uh, higher tier well, tier levels. So um, as the closer the technology gets, uh, uh, as the technology readiness increases, the closer the project gets to the industrialization. And the overall interactive project objective is to develop technology uh, and demonstrators, not only for trucks, but also for switches, switches and crossings systems, bridges and tunnel assets. Um, so this is quite a huge project and it is divided into several work packages. Uh, the design of the demonstrator truly is just one subtask of the, uh, the, the, work package four, which is about next generation track. So the demonstrator truly um, is just a, a small part of this. Uh, Rayanium has developed a contactless ultrasonic method to identify uh, ray level defects using the ENAT method. Uh, this work continue with the demonstrator truly to reach TRL 67, uh, allowing continuous measurements on track at the speed. And um, the objective is to identify the constraints and adaptations to be done to enhance the measurement system in all conditions. So the trolley is a fully automatic and motorized trolley that can give precise information about positioning and displacement. Uh, we're going to see more details uh, of the trolley. Okay. So it, it is a multi multi-element multi trolley, so it is easy to uh, transport uh, the trolley uh, in order to access uh, available trucks. Um, it is easy to assemble and it can be fully ready in about 10 minutes on the field. So the trolley is made of two axles, uh, two cross beams that can host uh, the measuring set and one central framework that can host heavy devices. Uh, the two axles are motorized and the speed can reach uh, about uh, 15 kilometers uh, per hour. Um, the speed is less than the test bench, but uh, corresponds to the constraints of the demonstrator uh, in the use. Um, the energy on the trolley is supplied with a battery, which is used for both motorization and the sensors uh, acquisition. The rail is clean before inspection and the sensors are protected in the measuring set. The trolley assembling, okay, the trolley assembling is made easy with uh, non-detachable elements that can be screwed by hand and which are mounted on springs not to interfere during the assembly. Um, the trolley is remotely controlled using a Wi-Fi router. So Wailenium developed a mobile application that allows us to control the speed of the trolley. The Wi-Fi communication also allows us to get the data while running the test to start the analysis. So we're planning to enhance the direct signal processing when carrying out some tests. Um, the measuring set gives us more position adjustments of the sensors and uh, as you can see on the image we have the possibility to duplicate the sensors whether to cover more distance during measurements or to add some other sensors to detect other defects such as a web located defect um, finally the demonstrator truly allows Wailenium to carry out some tests on available tracks with surface defects the collected data are allowed to reinforce the detection algorithm. Some tests have been made with the trolley at Eurotunnel facilities and we are currently planning some of the tests. So uh, this is the end of the presentation. I just put two links concerning the EMATS and the trolley in, into track three project uh, as the presentation will be sent to you. Um, there is one communication video also concerning the trolley for those who are curious. So thank you for your attention.
Thank you, Valentin. Ouais. Um, okay. I have one question, but I think it was only sent to me. Uh, what is the frequency of the measurements? Okay. So concerning the frequency, um, the electronic uh, elements allows us to reach about uh, 250 hertz. Um, as we are doing one meter every centimeter for the moment, uh, we can reach up to uh, about uh, nine kilometers an hour for the inspection. But we can expand this distance um, because we, uh, with the Q sensors, we are covering 20 centimeters at each uh, measurement. So uh, expanding the distance isn't uh, a problem. So it would allow us to increase the, the speed uh, of the measurements. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, th uh, there are uh, another questions from the participants. Please feel, <laughs> please feel free to ask. I just have one comment from uh, a participant saying uh, thank you and great webinar. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, when there is uh, everything clear so far, then uh, thank you, uh, Valentin, for this presentation. And uh, yeah, uh, to go on, um, uh, yeah, we a little bit on the uh, we are at the yeah at the end of the presentation uh, of the webinar. And uh, we would like to uh, get feedback from you. Um, how was the uh, webinar? Therefore, you can. We had a little uh, survey, only five questions. So, if you had uh, one minute left, uh, so please, uh, yeah, uh, do the survey and help us to get better. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, in addition, I had some uh, news from the uh, ESCI. So uh, at first, uh, from our uh, second uh, EU project, uh, so-called uh, SUCCESS, where we support uh, European SMEs uh, to get access to public procurement outside uh, the EU, um, we had two webinars on the railway markets uh, on the one side on of the uh, USA and on the other side of uh, Canada and uh, if you want to have more information about the project uh, you can again uh, visit the uh, um, project website and also uh, you can ask your uh, regional railway cluster they also uh, give you all information you will need uh, about this project to uh, get involved The next information uh, I had for you is uh, for uh, the end of March. There is the um, railway fair CIFA in Lille in France. And uh, in cooperation with the Enterprise Europe Network, uh, we organize B2B meetings. So if you had interest uh, in this, uh, you can ask the uh, French a railway cluster items or even uh, go on the website and you also get the information and at, uh, uh, at least um, I give you the information for the next uh, webinars uh, in the frame of uh, ERCI this is uh, on the 19th of April uh, to the topic software solutions for improving efficiency in railway operation and um, there are, in addition, three tutorials in the framework of the uh, STARS uh, EU project, uh, which take place uh, also on the 19th of April and uh, in the beginning of May. 
and uh, this is about uh, advanced technologies. Uh, it's very interesting uh, topics uh, and yeah, maybe I see you again there. Yeah, that's everything from uh, my side. Um, I thank you to be uh, here in this webinar and I hope you uh, I hope I see you again uh, in the next time. Thank you for participating.